I'm liking the look of these M4 four piston calipers. Four nice little pistons. Comes with these conical, these brackets have tapers and they have conical seat washers. So that means the little bit of irregularity that you have because your some bikes are not machined properly and the, the caliper, as soon as you tighten down, you notice your caliper has a little rock to it. And it goes and then the pads don't wear even. Now, one of my cables is too short. I'm gonna have to buy a cable kit and change it. That's one reason you don't want to uh, go this route if you want just something that's just nice and easy. Now, I do like the feel. The feel, it only moves that far. Take a look and you can feel the pads nice and firm. I'm looking forward to getting them on the bike. They got a, it's a one or a two finger pull. So the brake feel is great. Give it a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna try one finger here. A little hard with one hand, but uh, yeah, brakes work good. Okay, we accelerate. Hit the brakes, front brake only. Nice, that's only with one finger, guys. You got the contact right coming down to the bottom and going up to the top. So the pads fit really, really nice. They couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. I had to move the caliper down a little bit so it would miss the top of these and get right in the middle. Brakes. Getting them all seated in. Really pleased with the front brake. Stops really nice. Sorry about the noise, guys. Ran into a few fitment issues with the brake. I had to uh, get a one millimeter spacer and space the rotor out one millimeter. That wasn't a big deal. A little bit of research on YouTube showed me there was a spacer available. Somebody else had it when they put in their mechanical hydraulic hybrid brake calipers. So it looked good for me, so I ordered one. Space that rotor out one millimeter. Got some, picked up some longer bolts at Home Depot for the caliper to the mount. Gave me a little more bite. Got that caliper sitting right down where I wanted it. So if you've been following my channel, you know that I'm changing my brakes over to four piston hydraulic. Four piston in the front, four piston in the back. Now I haven't decided on the rear rotor size. I happen to have a 203, which is an eight inch rotor, and I'm probably gonna put that on here. Now on the front of this, electric XP 2.0. I have a 8 inch 203 millimeter front rotor. Now if you see this wrench right here, you see the length of this wrench, this ratchet wrench, ratchet with a socket, has a very long reach which gives you a lot of leverage. Leverage is what does most of the work. Now if you were to try to take this wheel off with this small 3 8 inch ratchet, you would have to exert a lot of force and you probably couldn't break that nut free. Now what does that have to do with anything? It's all about leverage. So, the rotor that came on the XP is a, eight inch, is a six inch rotor. So if you see the size of this six inch rotor, Compared to the one that's on there, you will see a big difference in the size. One. So I'm really pleased with this rotor, the way it's working on the front brake, and I'm sure that it will work great on the back brake. Now the problem with these back brakes and the front brakes is they didn't sit down over the, the rotor deep enough. And if you look down here, this pad is way over the top of that rotor, and it's over the top of the rotor on this side too, which means the pad is higher than the rotor. And then it's gonna to have to wear around the top of that rotor and not, it won't seat properly because as soon as it gets a little bit of wear in this area, it's gonna be uneven, unflat. This whole section, the pad material is not touching. The brake contact, 
the pad contact area is the whole width of the rotor and the pads are not riding way up high over the top of the rotor which causes the pad like I said not to wear properly you must be down over the complete top of the rotor in order to get your pad to wear properly so we are looking at the Maroka brake I'm finally getting around to working on my magnetic cutout switches to go with the e-bike the electric 2.0 so I made this lever this is the magnetic switch kit that you have to buy. It comes with 3M tape and it'll stick right to your brake master cylinder assembly, brake lever master cylinder assembly. Flat rod, I hammered it out from a piece of scrap stock that I had in my toolbox. Made the bends. It goes into the lever here around this pivot, which kind of holds it in place. It's got the bend to follow the contour of the master cylinder and right here it has a flip out. And that flip out is where the magnet's gonna go. And that gives you enough enough travel to trip the switch. This little magnet's gonna go right on there just like that. So this magnet will stick to that little bracket and move just like that. I took this lever off so you can take a look inside that inside here if I can get a focus where that metal rod comes through, right at that right at the thick point of the um, brake lever so take yourself a little bit of heat shrink see this little bit of heat shrink you're gonna have to stretch it so you're gonna have to come up with a way to stretch it now I had this pair of pliers that um, I'm just using them in reverse to spread the heat shrink slide in your heat shrink is going to go right here stuck to this master cylinder and the magnet is going to trip it which I will have to verify that it works that we're close enough So you don't even, you don't have to sweat the small details, just peel it and put it, stick it on there. I'm going to be doing that right now. And I'm going to pull back on this boot because I don't want it to stick to that boot. Boy, 3M has really made a name for itself. You don't have good, good stick, stiction unless you got 3M. So here we go, we're going to put it right there. And I left a little bit of gap because it, it's, I don't want contact there. And I've already tested it. So let's see if the rear wheel spins. The rear wheel spins. And I heard it go off. The wheel doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't there, right there. I recommend you buy all the special tools and you do it the proper way. But this worked for somebody on YouTube and it worked for me. It worked absolutely perfect. So I'm going to show you what I did. And like I said, I'm not recommending it. But if you're only working on one bike like myself, you may not need all those special tools. So in order to put this into the brake line they have a little press and the little press squeezes it in there and I like that but I ended up doing it this way so get yourself some tape so get yourself some tape don't forget to put the ferrule nut, the nut the tubing nut and the uh, ferrule they call it an olive I call it a ferrule because I'm from the automotive background to me it's just a ferrule okay and then you have your little barb that you're gonna put in here so put some tape around your brake line this will give you a little bit of protection that you don't mar the outside of the tube and put take your um, this is a little hard to uh, 
take an awl and open this up just a little bit. Put a little dab of oil in there. Little brake oil right around there. Take your barb, get it started just like that. Hold your brake line firmly and get yourself a plastic mallet and just give it a pop. Now I love special tools and if you want to buy a special tool, I advise you to buy a special tool. But this brake line, if I can get a focus here, came out beautiful. And that's all I did. Put it together, tighten up the ferrule nut, it'll squeeze this down. Actually, I put this on backwards, flip it around the other way. This is for demonstration purposes only. In fact, I'll turn it around right now just for the visual. Okay, so this goes like this. This ferrule nut goes just like that because the tubing, the threaded part is gonna squeeze on this and it's gonna squeeze squeeze this down and compress it against this nylon brake line. And this O-ring is gonna do the seal inside to the, the brake caliper. So you're gonna have a double, this is gonna seal everything down really good. And there was no special tools needed. Now I was reluctant to show this because, you know, I prefer to show you how guys how to use the proper tools to do the proper thing. But this is what I did after somebody showed me on YouTube. Okay, I had a uh, viewer request to see how I ran my brake lines. So my brake lines, well, he really, the question was about swapping over the brake lines. I didn't have to swap the brake lines because I used the left hand front brake in the position it came. So the, the cable is a little bit longer than it should be. Um, when I get time, if I feel necessary, I will change it over. But it just comes down here, comes down and then goes to where it needs to go, right here to the caliper. And the back one comes down here along the frame, goes through the two frame loops, goes under. There's a, uh, just cut your tie wraps off and there's a place here a frame mount, a frame mount here with a tie wrap on the inside, flips over and then just goes down here to the caliper. So that's all there is to run in the brake line. Now, I did have to make a brake hose, brake hose for the right side because the right side was too short. So this right side, I had to get a hose, cut it and then uh, put the barb in there. Now the type of barb you want is the one that has the O-rings on them. That's the one that came, that is the type that came out and that is the type that I ordered in, from Amazon and put back in. So the ones that came with the line, the brake line are these. And they might work too, but I like to keep it the way it was originally designed and it was originally designed. These O-rings fit in there really good. So when I went to pull out the original brake line, these were, these were in there nice and tight. So when you go to break these brake lines loose, you may distort the nut. The nut that is on here, the tubing nut that um, compresses the ferrule, this tubing nut right here, it'll probably distort because they are very tight. So what I did was, I just cut the one off that I was going to change anyway, and I used a six point socket on there. That way I didn't distort the tubing nut and I was, or the line nut, I was able to reuse it with no issues at all.
Finally got the M4 caliper mounted on my bike and got the hydraulic line cut to size and bled and was able to go out and break in these pads. I got a perfect contact pattern on the original rotor, the 140 millimeter rotor. This M4 four piston caliper is working great. I'm telling you, it stops so good. Now, if you look at the contact, the way these pads are sitting in that caliper, you can see, let me get a focus here. You can see that the rotor is sitting right above the top of the pads, which means the pads are using all the surface of the rotor. And let me tell you that that back brake works really well. Super quiet. The brakes are silent now. They work so much better than the factory cable operated brake that only has a single piston that squeezes from one side. And these brakes really stop. They got awesome stopping power. So this is a 203 millimeter rotor. This is a new 203 millimeter stand that raises the caliper up so that it will match and react in the proper position on the rotor. This is the M4 caliper. And now we are now in good contact pattern with the rotor. We're just a touch up off of the bottom of the rotor and just a touch inside from the top of the rotor. It is riding really in a sweet spot on this new rotor. The brakes are exceptional. They will do anything you want them to do and you can stop with one finger, one finger on the lever. You don't need two. So I just had to grind out this little notch right here so that it could, this caliper could sit down. The caliper has a little curve to it right here, which was contacting this new 203 mount. So a little bit of grinding here with a hand grinder just gave it a little bit of clearance. And then it fit just the way I wanted it to with a good pattern right in here on the rotor.